Hi guys, welcome back to Alamat, where we translate and narrate Philippine myths, urban legends, horror stories to share with the world. Our tale for this week is about a favor from the author's friend to take him to his ancestral house. This tale is called The Missing Passenger. I gently hit the brake and gradually moved my still relatively new Kia Picanto on the side of the arrival section of the airport. Wilbert is one of my long-lost high school buddies. He worked in Singapore for a long time. After not hearing from him for ages, I was surprised when he messaged me on Facebook Messenger and asked for a favor if I could fetch him at the airport and bring him to his ancestral home. I immediately said yes because we have not heard anything about him for a long time and I figured that fetching him would be the best way to catch up. The airport guard motioned me to move my vehicle closer to the side of the platform, to which I immediately followed. As if on cue, I saw Wilbert walking out of the airport with luggage and a sports bag. He was scanning the area, probably looking for me, so I opened the window, honked the horn, and waved my hand. He saw me and started walking in my direction. Strangely, he did not even smile nor acknowledge me. He's probably tired, I said to myself as I unlocked the front seat. Wilbert grabbed the back seat door handle, which is locked. Sit here in front, buddy. I pointed at the front side. He ignored me and just kept trying to open the back door. All right, all right. Back door it is, I whispered to myself as I opened the lock on the back door. He immediately entered my vehicle and made himself comfortable. Hey bud, how are you? Long time no see. I smiled widely, anticipating his answer. He looked at me coldly and said, Put my luggage in the trunk. My heart sank. This is not my old friend that I used to know. He's very cold, rude, and distant. I shook my head and went outside the vehicle to put his luggage and sports bag in the trunk. When I came back to the driver's seat, I glanced at Wilbert from the back mirror, and he was looking straight, as if in a trance. I decided not to disturb him, so I started the engine and started our journey. Halfway into our journey, we traversed a dark and long winding road. I started to notice that Wilbert was whispering unintelligible words to himself. Not only that, he seemed to be twitching or even convulsing from time to time. I actually have mixed emotions about what was happening. At first, I was disappointed and felt slighted by my longtime friend's coldness and somewhat rudeness. But now, I was deeply concerned and to be frank, afraid. There is definitely something wrong with this man. I kept on driving and kept on looking behind my back. Bro, are you alright? I asked Wilbert with concern. Wilbert moved his head and stared at me. This was the first time he locked his eyes on me. Normally, I would actually be happy, but not this time, because this time I was terrified. There are demons. His mouth gaped wide open, even before he finished with his sentence. I would have laughed this off when another vehicle passed by and illuminated the inside of my car. I swear, for a moment there. I saw a dark figure beside Wilbert. The figure immediately vanished as the light from the other vehicle stopped hitting it. At that point, I almost lost control of the steering wheel. I was shaking and was about to crap myself out of fright. When from a distance, I saw an open gasoline station. I swerved the vehicle and entered the gasoline station. Luckily, there were no other vehicles in the vicinity. Otherwise, I was sure I will be in an accident because I moved the vehicle with utter disregard for our safety. My tires screeched in front of the lone gas attendant manning the station. The boy jumped out of the way and said something, but I was too scared to even care to listen to what he just said. When the vehicle stopped, I reached for the handbrake, pulled it, opened the door with haste, and jumped out of the vehicle. I landed on the floor, shaking uncontrollably and looked at the bewildered gasoline boy. Jesus, sir, are you okay? What's wrong? 
he asked. I pointed at the back of the vehicle. He carefully peeked inside the vehicle, scratched his head, and looked at me. He didn't say anything, but just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders. I quickly stood up and looked. Wilbert was not there. I couldn't believe it. I squinted my eyes and looked again. Wilbert was gone. I ran to the vehicle's door where Wilbert was sitting and tried to open it. It was still locked. I remembered his luggage. I quickly went to the car panel and popped the trunk open. My jaw dropped as soon as I opened the trunk because his luggage and sports bag were not in there as well. What's wrong, sir? The gas attendant inquired. This time, his tone was firm. He was demanding for an explanation. I'm sorry. I saw a dark figure beside my friend just a few meters from here, but now even my friend is not here. I explained and pointed at the empty trunk. See, even his luggage is gone. My God, sir, please don't scare me. I'm always alone in this gas station at night. The attendant looked visibly disturbed while he scanned my face. I'm sorry, I don't know how to explain this to you as well. I touched my forehead. What's your name? I said as I shook my head in disbelief at what just happened. I'm Ray, sir, the attendant answered. Listen, Ray, I'm Jeffrey. Would you mind if I stay here for a while just to wait for my nerves to calm down? I asked. No problem, sir. It's nice to have someone to talk to for a change, Ray replied. After a few minutes, the shaking on my muscles stopped and I decided to just go home. I gave Ray a hundred pesos as a tip, which he gladly accepted. I hopped on my vehicle and started the engine. My ride home did not have any untoward incident until I passed by a familiar neighborhood near our house. It was still dark, but there were already quite a number of people on the street. Most of the people in our area needed to travel to the other cities for work. That's why they have to wake up very early in the morning to avoid traffic on their commute. I was quite relieved and the tension was almost gone. I turned right on the corner and when I looked at a two-story house on the right side of the road, all the hair on my body stood up. I panicked and decided to step on the gas, but my engine stalled right in front of the gate of the house. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. After a few moments, I said, All right, buddy. This is your stop. After which, I popped the back door and trunk open. I exhaled and opened my eyes. Goodbye, buddy. I whispered as I stepped out of the car to close the back door and the trunk. It's strange. I don't feel scared anymore as I looked at the old abandoned and dilapidated house. I remember this house as Wilbert and I have fond memories here when we prepared for our projects back in our high school days. I smiled as I took a final glance at Wilbert's ancestral house. Later, I learned that Wilbert died from a work-related accident in Singapore a few days before I fetched him at the airport. What do you guys think of this week's story? If you enjoyed the story and if you're enjoying the content on this channel, don't forget to like subscribe, and share this to your friends and family. If you have stories you would want me to narrate, send them over at mrlamatph at gmail.com. Salamat guys, and see you in the next one.